So we've gone a couple times around. Uh, the ESA continues to prepare its rocket for launch, um, as does the PRC. They have been having trouble getting people to pay for the cards they draw um, because everybody knows that they just need cash right now, basically. They've got such a big pile. And people have claims or are on the way to having claims. Um, Shimzu, busy doing what? Refueling at this point. Um, they've got a hard, hard, uh, hard row to hoe right now. They're on a low water planet where they can only refuel one, one each time. <sighs> they've got a launch. They don't want to make it home. They don't want to limp home and have to do this all again. They want to try catching other planets. It's a tough job at this point. Um, there's a lot of room, not planets, but there's a lot of room between sites uh, where they're able to go. And they're only able to go there because of their low thrust and their solar power. So they've got to kind of get lucky. NASA did get lucky. They went out onto the new map uh, to the Jovian... Uh, moonlets and on their first hit there they actually discovered a site. They're going to probably continue exploring the Jovian moonlets um, and then head home. Uh, it's a long way out to just have only one thing that they gain. The problem with that is with only one thing um, it's less of a target. If they gain more, if they gain more claims there, it becomes a real interesting place for the PRC. So they've got to think here, but they've got this huge uh, the regolith uh, thruster, which allows them to just reload their fuel whenever they like, anywhere. Uh, that's a really, really potent thruster, and they're very happy to own that. Um, over to the UN, they made it back, decommissioned their crew in low Earth orbit, getting themselves a glory point. Now they got to figure out how to get this refinery up into space and traveling to their site, along with the necessary implements to build a factory there. Um, but we're really beginning to cook at this point. And I think, with all the players, with the expanded map, etc., I'm seeing a somewhat um, longer-looking game in terms of in the four player game on the one map maybe it's because I got lucky with some of my explorations and I think the die that came with the game which I'm using this time seems to be rolling really poorly on exploration which is a bonus from my point of view uh, we're seeing a lot of broken minds in this game whatever whatever the, the factor in place and I think that helps um, the broken, well, they're not broken minds, but failed explorations. Um, the broken minds rule produces the same sort of thing. <sighs> I'm not thrilled with, uh, with implementing that, just because I kind of like the idea that you can explore the near stuff, but I'm really glad that it, we're seeing failures all over the place, because <laughs> it's making it more interesting. Um, the people who got the early rockets, etc., aren't necessarily hugely advantaged yet. So, stuff is happening. Um, the ESA launched a rocket. Now, they needed their one fuel that they get from an income gathering uh, operation to get the amount of fuel they want together. Um, they're actually launching to get to Ceres, and from there, they might have to do other things, but they have a really, really crappy uh, I, a Robonaut ISU, ISRU-3, which limits them um, in terms of Ceres is a value as is this if they can get there but they need a lot of water to be able to, to prospect at all. However you see the PRC's on the moon didn't think that was going to happen um, what they did was they built to, uh, what they could and Took a bit of a risk, fired through the radiation zone, and on a one and sit uh, on a six, which they got, they broke their radiators. Okay, but they used the afterburners, 
and they're using those for cooling uh, to drop a little bit more heat and they are going to be able to make it to that uh, UN claim and jump it. Uh, that's kind of big. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's uh, this radiator is part of their rocket. Uh, it's now at lesser value. They have to they have to blow their afterburner every time. That means they may not be able to make it back to Earth. Oh, poor them! But because they're the Chinese, they can leave their crew out there to fend for themselves without air and all that. Um, all right. And to finish off that turn, uh, NASA found another claim, which is beginning to convince the PRC they really should get something out there. Um, and when we look at the UN, uh, they, pick, they picked up a reactor. They think they've got a better rocket with this thing. It reduces the thrust tremendously, but makes them no longer uh, reliant on the solar power so that they can begin exploring um, a little deeper than they have been because there's just nothing nearby and it looks like the PRC is going to get the close thing. Another time around in the ESA has taken off and is heading towards Ceres. The PRC has landed and jumped the claim. Uh, NASA continues its exploration of the Jovian uh, moonlets or whatever, and this time it failed to find something. It's just going to explore that whole thing and then head home. Um, UN playing with cards made a couple made a couple water off that, and uh, Shinzu is still trying to refuel. Very quickly, the ESA just uh, hit one of these uh, burn spots that trigger events and of course that moved the comets but it resulted in a glitch and they have no one on board so they decommissioned their radiator down to the lower value now they're in the same problem that the uh, that the PRC was in but theirs is a little worse. They had just enough fuel to make it to where they wanted Ceres. And if they're going to have to dump coolant into the afterburner, they're not going to make it. So what do they do? Well, they stop here, and they're going to have to head back home, I think. Uh, because otherwise their whole stack gets decommissioned, which would suck. So there's the risk of going out into space. So following that, the PRC uh, decommissioned their stack. Um, now it's all back in, on the earth and they have to start all over to get a refinery up to their new site. Overall, you know, if they hadn't gotten unlucky going through the radiation belt, they'd still have a working rocket and could make their way home pretty quickly. So it was a bad break for them, but they're not in terrible shape even so. Shimzu very slowly still refueling. Um, NASA still finding nothing. Um, they're on their way home very soon. They just have to they just have to pump their fuel up. And uh, UN trying to figure out uh, they're thinking about going with crewless exploration. Pretty much the same rocket but they got a refinery now. It'll move a little slower. Should be able to make it into the middle range and there's some valuable stuff out there take their chance there because right now there's nothing that they can really reach easily. ESA was uh, actually at the halfway point between Earth and Ceres. Since they couldn't make it to Ceres, they couldn't make it to Earth either. They didn't have a crew on board, so they just decommissioned their whole stack and said the hell up. Now they'll try to figure out a new one. PRC boosted some more uh, they boosted their thruster back up and some of the supports for um, They think they're ready, they just need more fuel, which means they have to sell another card before they can launch. Um, Shinzu landed somewhere and found a site. And that's very good for them. Um, 
they're probably going to head home and try to package up a refinery set. They've got a refinery. I don't know if it works. They got cash. They can play around in their head and figure out whether or not they got what they want. Um, NASA, on its way home, had to make a stop because they're going to have to refuel. And in fact, they're allowed to do that. Uh, they didn't spend a card. They pumped their fuel back up. And they're at 432 for that. And the UN uh, played with cards. Got a couple for one water. Planning on selling them. They need to get some cash together for their next exploration. Actually, I lied about the Shimzu. Um, I noticed they had actually hauled a refinery that they've got supported. So they'll be building a factory there. Um, I'll decide what it is and what kind of product it's producing in a moment, but I just wanted to point that out. Uh, before that, a card sold by the PRC. Um, the poor uh, ESA dumped a card out of orbit so that they could get some cash. They don't have enough cash to lift everything that they have up, even. Um, and they can't play the cards for cash game until they get rid of those cards and get, get these guys either in orbit or well, they need these so they had a card that they had paid to boost that really wasn't doing them much good and didn't look like it would in the near future so rather than taking just one buck a turn they dropped it back in, onto the planet. So now that they have a factory and they produce this no crew present um, so they don't have to try to get the crew back they have a new product and we're on the black side of the card this is actually a very nice thing it's a uh, a zero mass Robonaut I, it's the ISRU1 one that they used to colonize there and it kept that value which is very good it has a nice little thruster on it uh, an expensive afterburner but that's kinda cool but it requires a generator otherwise they would just produce it and launch the sucker right away. <laughs> um, but now they have to get a generator. Now they have one of the correct type, but they have to get a generator up there uh, in order to fuel this thing. It's also got a regolith. Uh, so it's going to be very, very helpful um, for their future work. Uh, other than the fact that they need the thruster to get the generator there, um, this is going to probably be their main thruster from now on, so they may end up getting rid of this one. Uh, at this point, they have to start looking for sites that will match letters that they, they can produce, actually, because uh, that's their only S. Um, so, yeah, they, they got an interesting little, little situation here, because with that one uh, ISRU, there are a lot more one water areas around. So right now Shinzu is doing really, really well. We'll see how things go. NASA's, you know, got sites that it can go populate, etc. But I feel like Shinzu's got the bonus right now. Um, just by getting a good card out early. And very briefly, NASA's making its slow way home. Um, it has enough fuel to make it it can't do any speed jumping uh, on the Holman transfers um, so it's gonna gotta stop at every every space um, on to the UN player um, like I think I said before they got a rocket together they're selling off their cards they need the cash uh, and then they're gonna they've got a, a, a a good expedition to outfit. They're going to be traveling for a long way, so they'll be able to research new cards, etc. That'll be no problem for them. All right, I think we're at a point where uh, we're definitely seeing kind of a turning point in the game. I think things are happening now. What with the uh, factory being built, with claims being placed in on here, um, the PRC claim will probably get it exploited soon. Who's got problems? Well. Wow. Uh, the UN and they were the ones you know I mean they had so many opportunities to find something early and then when they finally did it got stolen 
uh, they certainly have not been terribly unlucky. It's just they've been hosed. <laughs> um, I'm beginning to have second thoughts about some of my earlier considerations. I still don't think this is the greatest game in the world for me, but specifically about the map, and I'll go into this a little later, I think a design decision had to be made. Uh, and I think the one that was made was represent the complexity of that movement uh, without worrying too much about the time aspect. I'm still pissed off about how the events and the triggers from here um, change time. I, I really don't like that. I really do not. Uh, I don't think that the one year per turn should even be specified because it's not even true. Um, but I think this aspect where the events firing off and how people are moving affects how much time is passing. That really kind of disturbs me. It might work in some games, it, it, it doesn't in this. Anyway, um, but given the decision that this kind of, um, you know, there's no way you could, cal could calculate out the changes in where the transfer points would be uh, easily. And the only thing that I'd think is if there was time involved in it, instead of having it um, determined by player actions, maybe have a set time uh, cycle that every turn changed, reflect the comets correctly in it, and also try to reflect the planets in it. And I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> um, some planets could simply not be accessible by a certain, you know, on certain turns just because they're too far away. Uh, also, acceleration is not the only effect. Um, it takes years to get out to Saturn. Now, that's reflected correctly in the game, but... Those years, uh, how do I want to put this? Um, so, conceivably, you could make that, um, I, I, this is the, the movement of the planets issue. Um, it takes so many years to get to Saturn at its closest point, at its furthest point, it takes many, many more years. And t time in the game is only really represented by where you have to use thrust. Uh, that, I think, is the problem, uh, in a sense. Thrust and time have become intertwined in a way that isn't realistic, no matter what. Anyway, I'm going to load this sucker up, uh, and we'll keep going. I'm enjoying it more than I thought. <laughs> 